it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. It is Wednesday night, and I didn't make it to church. I had company. I guess I'm bad, but anyway. Um, I told you guys that we would talk about what we talked about Sunday at church. My dog's going to go out there and bark. Now, look, Soda, you're not going to be loud the whole time I'm talking. Do you understand? Now, behave. So, we're going to talk about what Pastor taught us on Sunday. Because um, I just had my company leave, and so I want to make sure that, um, and plus we, we talked about um, the next couple of verses, not verses, but Bible lessons from last week, a couple of days ago. Um, it was actually Pastor Henry that taught this, and that was my children's pastor for years, and he's our children's pastor at Tabernacle uh, Baptist there in Hiram, Georgia. But it was such a good service, I thought that we would touch it, you know, touch and talk about it. It's very encouraging. It's a very encouraging message, and it is um, about we are the church. And this is going to come out of Romans 16, verses 1 and 2. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over here to Romans 16, and um, we may even go back, back in the bedroom, if y'all don't mind, waiting on me a second. Because it's quieter in there, and my dog's going to run in and out of this room, and she's going to bark, and then the and then the um, dishes are washing next to me, and so I think I could get my mind more acclimated and where it ought to be in my little study room. Okay, okay Pastor Henry talked about this on Sunday. Um, it comes out of Romans 16, and it's called "We Are the Church." And this is a really good message, and I hope y'all like it. Um, I'm actually going to turn off this fan. Doesn't it sound good when it's quiet? It's so quiet when Chris is gone because I don't run the TV at all. I just love it. I love the TV to be off. Um, no, I, I don't mean I love my husband being gone, but I do like the quiet, I have to admit. But if, if something happened to him, it would be awfully sad for it to be quiet here all the time. Um, so I don't want anything to happen to him. Forgive me if you think that. Let's see. Romans 16, 1 and 2, we're going to read these two verses. This is about Sister Phoebe. Uh, Phoebe, I mean, not Phoebe. I said Phoebe in there. Phoebe, I'm crazy today. Sister Phoebe. Now, Sister Phoebe is a woman. And um, Pastor Jack said she was probably one of the the. He was talking about how nobody's perfect, you know, and nobody in the Bible's perfect. But if there was a perfect church, you know, he said one day um, he was riding down the road and there was a church and it said, come join the perfect church. And he was like, he said, it makes, he made me want to go join it. And then when I joined, looked at the pastor and said, now you can take that crazy sign off down outside because I'm not perfect. And now I'm a member of your church. So anyway, he was talking about that, but he said Sister Phoebe was one of the most uh, perfect church members that we could use as an example to help us know how we are supposed to be in the church and as a believer in Christ with each other, okay? So we're going to read these two verses and we're going to learn from a woman this time in the Bible and the Word of God. Women are important too. Um, and it says, uh, chapter 16, it says, I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in Cen it's, uh, Centuria, that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. So, I'm going to do this just like he did, and I'm going to go down the little list that I wrote down during, um, I thought I had more than one page. I know I did. Oh, here it is. Y'all thought y'all were going to get off easy, me just have one little page. Anyway, he says, Phoebe, uh, Phoebe, there I go again. Phoebe gives insight on how we can be the church, sister, a servant, and a saint. She is named after the Greek moon goddess Artem Artemis, but 
but instead of beaming like the moon, she is shining for Jesus because she's been saved, okay? He says that she is called a sister because she is part of the family, and we are all siblings in Christ, and he talked about how when we become, when we get saved, we become the children of God, and then we call each other bros and sisters in Christ, and how we truly are a family, a real spiritual family, and um, we are truly brothers and sisters in Christ, and and uh, you know a little bit about brothers and sisters and how we um, are going to have things happen. Like if um, if we're truly a family, there's things that are going to happen, things that are going to get said, things that are going to get done. But we need to remember that we're brothers and sisters, really love each other like brothers and sisters, okay? So he says that we are part of a spiritual family and we are a child of God. Um. And then he recalled, and I didn't write this down because I've had company, I'm sorry, but, and, um, I mean, I could search it on Blue Letter Bible and have it like that, but I didn't write down the verse that it comes from, but some of y'all know. And if you want to search it on Blue Letter Bible, go ahead and you'll find the actual verse that it comes from. But he says that Jesus does say, whoever does the will of my father is my brother, my sister, my mother. And I, and I believe that may be one place, if I'm just remembering off the top of my head, uh, because I haven't looked it up, uh, but it seems like it's where somebody's telling him that um, he needs to go see his something about his mother, and he turns around and says, you know, that whoever does the will of his father is his brother, his sister, and his mother. In other words, um, he was letting them know that children of God and the, the people who get saved are truly his um, family. They're really his family. And they're just as important to him as his real mother was. Okay? So, um, and then the pastor said, um, and see, I can't look this up because I don't have any internet. He said, you know, there's a song called The Family of God. And we, we used to sing it every Sunday when we shook hands. And it says, um, Christians are put together, called up together. And um, so he, he, he actually read out the words to the family of God. And, I mean, all I know is the verse. I mean, like the, the main part. And it says, um, hey, man, y'all know how my mind works. We're a part, we're a part of the family of God. I've been washed by the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For a part of the family, the family of God. And I know I probably said something wrong because in my mind, words are always different than what they're supposed to be. Chris just laughs and laughs at me. But uh, especially when I sing things, he's like, really? Is that really what you've been singing all these years? And I'm like, yeah. But anyway, it's it's a song about the family of God and how we really are a part of the family of God. And Pastor Jack said it's one of his very favorite songs. And you can look that up too and, read the, and, and look at the actual words to the whole song because they're really beautiful words. But he lets us know, and the, then his next point was, there are 59 times in the Bible where it talks about one another and the behaviors flow from a life of one walking with Christ and he was telling us that um, when we're Christians uh, part of being in the church and part of wanting to be part of the church um, we should want to minister to one another and he talked about Phoebe doing this because she was a servant she was a saint, and she was a sister. So she was all the things that she needed to be um, in the church, okay? So he told us that the, it, when there's, there's the 59 one another's in the Bible, 
that we are supposed to minister to one of each what to each other as children of God and brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, I'm going to read these real quick, and some of them repeat, but in the Bible, these are some of the things that we are supposed to do with one another or for one another or to one another, okay? So y'all just listen and think about this. This is all about your brothers and sisters in Christ, whether it's in your real family or not. If it's in your church family, whoever it is. Me, I'm, I'm your sister in Christ. All, everybody. So it says, um, have peace with one another. Wash the feet of one another. Love one another. Devoted to one another. Honor one another. Be in harmony with one another. Love one another. Stop judging one another. Accept one another. Instruct one another. Greet with a holy kiss to one another. Wait for one another. And that's uh, talking about when you get together to eat and there's somebody late. You should wait on them before y'all eat. Believe it or not. Um, have equal concern with one another, greet one another, serve one another, um, do not destroy one another, do not provoke one another, um, carry one another's burdens, have compassion on one another, forgive one another, speak with songs to one another, submit to one another. Consider one another. Do not lie to one another. Bear one another. Forgive one another. Do not have grievances against one another. Teach one another. Admonish one another. Love one another. Encourage one another. Build up one another. Do not slander one another. No grumbling with one another. Pray for one another. Have hospitality towards one, one another. Humility towards one another. Love one another. Love one another. Love one another. Love one another. And he repeated that a lot. There's a lot of love one another. Now think about that. Are you that one another Christian? Okay, that's a lot of one another's. And that's a lot of things he tells us to do for one another. And so he was telling us that it's hard to be a one another Christian when we go to church and we sit in rows and um, we get up and we leave. And so how much are we really doing for one another? For all these different things he tells us to do for one another. And this is our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is not for the unsaved and this is not for uh, ministering to the lost or anything like that. This is strictly part of being a family of God. The things that we are to do for one another. And he talked about how if in the church today that the Christians could get a hold to that and be that strong with one another that the, the church would just be busted out of the seams and you'd have workers out of the seams, and you would never need anybody to, you know, never be in need because there would be so many volunteering. And he talked about how Phoebe um, was that kind of a Christian, and she was the kind of Christian that would do anything that needed to be done, okay? So he, um, he said that Phoebe was a saint, and that being a saint was a process, and it was um, that... He said, when we get, um, we get sanctified, and then we get saved, and then we become vessels for Christ. And he said, sanctification is a lifetime process to become like Christ. And that Jesus fulfilled every one another. Jesus did fulfill every one another. And he said, Jesus can say, I never knew you. And you know what he's talking about when, um, when it's time for him to accept a, you know, a judgment. There will be some that he will look at and he will say, you know, I never knew you. And so Pastor Jack was saying, um, you need to think about, are you really doing these one another's? Because um, how much time are, you, are we spending with God? He said um, he wanted us to be open and honest with God and think about these one another's. 
and um, he tell he he said that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, uses the Word, of course, to make us more like Christ. And so he emphasized how important it was that we would get in God's Word and we would read His Word, so that we could become more like Christ. Because that is what Christ wants us to do. Christ wants us to become more and more like him every day. That's the whole purpose we're here, is to be more like Christ. So what he said is, what if for 24 hours Jesus walked in your shoes? So could your family see a difference in who you are if Jesus walked in your shoes? And he said, um, think about that. You know, are you doing the one another's like Jesus did? And if Jesus walked in your shoes, how much of a difference would it make in you for other people to notice? And, uh, I mean, I can tell you right now, they notice noticing a heartbeat minute with me. I mean, because I know I'm not, you know. I mean, we can always use work, can't we? Absolutely, and especially if we're going to compare ourselves to Jesus, which is exactly who we should compare ourselves to instead of other people around us. Um, and he talked about how God says that he is going to take out our stony heart and put in a new clean heart and that we should ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit and um, we should want to be a servant like Phoebe. Um, and minister because Jesus said here that she helped many and their needs including me um, so his thing of course it's the fall of the year and so Pastor Jack after he of course he did a lot better job on that whole you know uh, sermon that that I was just kind of giving you an outline of it but he was trying to prepare our hearts to show us how much we're really supposed to do for each other in the church and how the church was supposed to be a place that we come to and worship, but it's also supposed to be a place where we as a family get together as a group of people in a community and we help one another and we love one another and we encourage one another and all of these one another's that we're supposed to do. And, and then, you know, he even gets on to us and tells us not to do some things to one another, of course. And, but, but what he repeated more than anything is love one another, love one another, love one another, and how important that is. And he said, so when it comes time to have nursery workers in the, in the nursery, you know, there shouldn't be a need that isn't fulfilled in a church if everybody's doing their one another's. Um, so, of course, he let everybody know he even said that one time where, where he pastored before, I think you said it was in Dalton, Georgia, he told the congregation that for a couple of weeks, or he was just not going to preach for a few weeks, and they and that he was going to need some volunteers for speaking, and they wanted to know why, and he told them that he was going to work in the nursery until he could get some workers in the nursery, because there weren't any workers for the nursery. So he said... I never did have to stop preaching. They decided that they would get up and volunteer to work in the nursery. But I'm telling you, after he brought this message to us, um, we had a lot of people go forward and, um, you know, sur surrender their time and efforts to serve in the church, doing whatever is needed to be done. And I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't know if Chris would want to do it or not. And of course, I didn't want to fill out the card as his wife without him, you know, being us being like a team because we've done a lot of stuff in the church before but we haven't served in the church in years we really haven't and um and so chris kind of since he's retired he kind of likes to have it his way you know and 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 i ain't gonna lie i do too i mean i'm not there tonight like i ought to be but he he wants to be able to leave and go to florida when he wants to and that kind of thing and and so i didn't really know if he'd fill out the card but he filled out the card so we filled out the card together and we volunteered so i don't know um, what they will have us do, but I told Pastor that we could do just about anything and that um, we would just pray about it. And so y'all just pray that all the people that go went forward on Sunday, um, that they would be in the right places in our church and that our church can minister to each other and to the community like it should be able to do. And with as many people went forward on Sunday, I would think we'd have plenty of workers as well. 
Um, so y'all just think about that. I'm on. I'm on. I'm gonna read these one more time just to kind of, kind of get them in your head. Do you know what I mean? Think about these things. If you do go to church, you know, think about the things that Jesus is telling us to do for each other, and and just you know, kind of uh, meditate on them this week. And it says, um, I'm just gonna walk through them one more time. And it says, these are one another's that Jesus asks us to do for one another. It says, have peace with one another, wash the feet of one another, love one another, be devoted to one another, honor one another, be in harmony with one another, love one another, stop judgment on one another, accept one another, instruct one another, greet with a holy kiss with one another, wait on one another, have equal concern for one another, greet one another, serve one another, do not destroy one another, do not provoke one another, um, carry one another's burdens, have compassion on one another, forgive one another, speak with songs to one another, submit to one another, consider one another, do not lie to one another, bear one another, uh, forgive one another, do not have grievances against one another, teach one another, admonish one another, have your love increase for one another, encourage one another, build up one another, no slander against one another, no grumbling against one another, pray for one another, have hospitality for one another, humility towards one another, love one another, love one another, love one another. That's just beautiful, isn't it? I mean, just to think all the things that we're supposed to do for one another. And think about, you know, think about how lots of times church people can be. And I mean, I'm, I'm a church person too. You know, when you go, you go, you're there on Sunday and, you know, and, and I mean, you got people that have been to church so much and that's just what they do every Sunday. And they get up and they go and they think about what somebody's wearing. As long as it's, uh, now, I don't like it if they're not modest. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like that. I don't want to see a woman's body parts showing or a man's either when I'm in church trying to worship God, period. Okay? But I don't care about what kind of shoes they've got on or what kind of purse she's carrying and that kind of thing. And that should never cross our mind. Um, whether or not they got on pants or a skirt should not cross our mind. Whether or not... Um, you know, they're in your seat should not cross our mind. Whether or not, uh, I don't know. There's all kind of crazy things that get our attention at church instead of what it should really be on. Whether or not they wiped their kid's nose that morning or whether or not, uh, I mean, just goofy things. But think about all the things that Jesus asks us to think on. And if it were up to Jesus, he would have us all greet each other with a holy kiss. I mean, think about how much love is there. Think about how much Jesus would love people if he went in the church. Do you think Jesus would think about what somebody was wearing or uh, what their kids were acting like? Or, I mean, just think about, you know, think about how much abundant love he had. I mean, we could never love the way Jesus loved except that it would be Christ living through us. Okay, so naturally we can't love like that and we can't have the compassion and the love and the tenderness Jesus did naturally. But you know what? Because we do have the Holy Spirit living inside of us because we are children of God and because we are family with one another, we can do those one another's. If we feed ourselves the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that's in us, the Word of God, then we can become just like Phoebe. We can be a saint and we can be a servant, and we can be a sister. We can be all the things that Christ would want us and have us to be. So I just thought that it was a beautiful um, service on Sunday. I hope y'all enjoyed it some. And that is out of Romans chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. That is where our sister Phoebe is talked about. And so there are some um, good, you know, a lot of good um, nuggets out of that, I felt like, Sunday. Uh, I thought it was very encouraging, and it was a blessing, and that that it encouraged me, you know, to love people. And um, I just think it's a, it's a great thing. I know one thing that changed me, uh, and I will say this, before I had cancer, 
I was like a lot of those things that I talked about. I mean, I thought a lot of those generic things in church that I shouldn't be thinking of. And I'm not saying every time I went, I went worshiping God. That's not what I'm saying. But I will say that I did have a hard time, a lot harder time with people. And then when I when I came close to death and I realized what was important to me, then I learned how important it is for us to love people exactly how they are. Not want them to change, not want them to be somebody else, not, I mean, we're not supposed to not like somebody because they're the busybody at the church or because they're hyper and they're running around doing everything. We're supposed to love them because that's who they are. Everybody has a different personality. Everybody learns different. Everybody communicates differently. Everybody has love languages that are different. And we shouldn't think that our way is the only way. So if I got anything out of having cancer and being close to death, and when it comes to the church and people in the church, that is probably the number one thing that I learned is to love people um, for who they are. Now, does it mean that I never, that I'm perfect? No. And um, my, just like I said, about the only thing that I have a problem with at church is people not covering themselves up. That really bothers me. And it is scriptural, so I feel like I got something to back it up. Other than that, I don't care if they wear rags as long as they're covered up. I mean, I could care less. But y'all know me. I'm not I'm not too much of a high-maintenance woman. So, I mean, the, the type of clothes they got on don't matter to me. What matters is that they're dressed modestly. Um, so, other than that, uh, the rest of it, to me, we should just love each other to pieces. So, let's start loving each other more. If you're not a part of a church... Um, think about how wonderful it would be to have a, a family that loved you like this. Because a lot of our own families do, do not even love us with Christ's love like our spiritual family can. And there's been plenty of times in my life when I was just as close with my spiritual family or more than my own family. They're very important. And so if you're not a part of one of those families, um, don't join a church thinking it's going to be perfect and don't join a church thinking that the people are going to be perfect because you're not perfect either. Nobody's perfect. Church is full of people and therefore it's going to have problems based in their singing. So um, let's just remember that too. Uh, but we all need work. Lots and lots of work every day. And just like Paul, the Apostle Paul, as sweet as he was, smart as he was, and as much as he wrote of the Bible, he knew that every day he had to die for die to self and let Christ uh, live in him and through him. And um, I don't think personally, I just don't think there's a whole lot of people in this world that really do that every day. And I fail to do it every day. Um, I wish I got up every day and got on my knees and asked God to work through me. And, and I think, you know, Maybe one day I'll get there, but God knows my heart and he knows um, that I'm human and, you know, I'll never be perfect, but I could be a lot better if I would let him use me as a vessel like I should. So y'all have a good night. Thanks for watching, Real Southern Woman. I am going to go rest. Tomorrow's the first day of school. Amy's first day of school is tomorrow. She has her schedule. Y'all, she gets home by 10.30 in the morning. She has like one class or two classes at school. Then she comes home and she has the rest of her classes at the uh, technical college. So, um, and most, I think every one of them this semester is actually online. So she's got a really light schedule, but she is a senior. May moves to Mercer on the 17th. So we'll be moving her out on the 17th. So, um, yeah, it's going to be pretty wild here. It's going to be a lot different. But I love it when we get back on the schedule. Oh, it's right up my alley. So um, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about tomorrow being the first day of school myself. And it's my last baby in school. Y'all know I never thought that it would bother me. And it has it never bothered me with me. The, the strangest things are happening to me. And I guess you girls know how I feel that have been through this. But I have never been a sentimental person. Never been one to cry when my kids started kindergarten. Never wanted to cry.
cry when I dropped them off at the bus, or I never even went in with them on the first day of school. I went to their open houses and I dropped them off. I'm just not that kind of mama. And I just didn't think I would ever be bothered because I'm excited about them going to college. It's exciting and it's fun. And I remember how much fun it was for me, but I don't know why, but me and Ellen went to see Aladdin the other day at the movies. And the whole time I sat there watching Aladdin, all I could think about is May and Amy when they were little girls watching Aladdin, riding around on their carpets, pretending. And then we go into um, Bells the other day, me and Ellen, and I was walking around and all of a sudden I go by and I see toys and baby clothes. And it's just the weirdest thing. It's like it's really hitting me how big they really are. And it's just really strange and weird. And it's a really strange feeling. And I, and so, um, and all you ladies out there that have been through the empty nest thing um, know what I'm talking about. And, um, and I just never thought I would be that way. But I am starting to feel like that. So thank God is all I got to say for grandkids. I'm so glad that one day I'll have a grandbaby and I'll get to do all those things over again. And I'm sure it's even sweet, sweet, sweet as a granny. And, and I, some of y'all can tell me how nice it is. Y'all have a good night and let's say our prayers. I'm so glad that y'all joined me tonight. And um, I love all of y'all. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, and we thank you for the cycle of this life that you give us here and that you um, have allowed us to have with our children. We thank you for the fact that you've allowed us to be here when they grow up, and we know that it is a, truly a blessing, and not everybody gets to see their children grow up and go off to college, and, and um, we are truly thankful for that. But help all of us mothers and dads who are about to um, kind of um, scoot our children out the door and off to a new adventure. It is a scary thing and help each and every one of us. May we not forget to pray for them. Um, and may we not forget to um, ask for your hedge around them so that the world um, will not, so that the, the devil doesn't tempt them too much out in the world. Um, I mean, I know they're going to be tempted, but we just pray for your guidance and leadership through the Holy Spirit in their hearts. Um, thank you for being with us as a group that come together and worship and study your word. May we love on each other and have all of these one another's that we talked about tonight for each other and encourage one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good night, and I hope you rest well tonight and have sweet dreams, too. And um, once I sign off, I always read your comments, and, and I always look to see who came to see and uh, be a part of our little family here with uh, Real Southern Woman. God bless y'all.